the truth, but there's certain ways I want to do it. Um, you know. Okay, black women. I was doing it once again a little perusing through um what is it, YouTube. I was getting ready to say Instagram. <laughs> anyway, and I came across this video of Cerebrals, how to give young black girls self-esteem. Now, mind you, everything I'm saying, I feel this shit straight from the heart, from mind, body, and soul, right? Never take advice from people who do not have children, telling you how to raise your children or what you should do to raise them up. I really, really fucking mean that. And I don't care who comes on and says, oh, no, they can really help you. To no, they can't. Okay. Um, I have daughters, right? And let me tell you about things that people who give all this bullshit, pseudo social advice never talk about is the reality of life, right? This woman, I don't know, she, she always comes across to me as always trying to play it so fucking safe as to not to offend whitey or other people so that she keeps her check coming. Yo, the desperation of these people on YouTube for money is crazy. And I really wish one day YouTube would fucking crash because all these fucking people on here, they need to go. They really do. So now let me get into this thing that I feel needs to be talked about when they talk about how to how to give young girls self-esteem. I'm talking about raising them properly, right? First off, right? When your little girl is a little black girl, she goes to any white public school. She is inundated. You hear the word I use? Inundated with microaggressions every fucking day by white female teachers, white student counterparts, and anyone else in authority, especially if it's a Hispanic person or anyone else who believes that because white people put white on their birth certificate, that gives them an automatic license to dehumanize black people and seriously take advantage of black children when their parents are not around or any family member that will get in that ass for them harassing and bothering their child. Okay. Little black girls are very special in a sense where we, I know with my daughters, I used to do this thing, little woman in training, right? And it was, I would literally talk to them about things that happened to me throughout the week and throughout the day and really about how white people and other people in this country do not like you and even though they pretend they are not to be trusted and i would teach my girls how to navigate around them this is something that is very real those of you that are oh no they too young for that you're doing your kid a disservice and it will show exactly how in years to come you have to prepare your kids for everything when they're small so that as they grow they understand what they're encountering and they learn better coping skills and even response skills and ways of defending themselves against things because people like to attack children because children are vulnerable. So school is very important. And I keep thinking about that because I keep thinking about how you know how when you have um, girl children, there's, it seems to always be a thing where one girl I know I have more than one daughter, so it, it was like um, my other daughters have way more hair than my one daughter, right? So the daughter with the shortest hair, and when I say that, it wasn't short, 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 like shoulder length, uh, and the other girls were like almost mid-back and stuff like that, right? So when she, I would braid their hair, because I would, since they're very light in skin tone, I would always braid their hair to make their blackness seriously identifiable because you have to understand right um i'm a black woman that comes from several 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 other father men who had the black women in my family right and then i had children with both two different men from two different islands who were half indian and half black whatever the hell you know jamaicans are made of and whatever the hell guyanese men are made of but so my children don't look like how can I, they look black but 
they don't have what people would would consider like the typical i guess phenotype of black people because their skin is very light their hair is is very curly is inclined to go straight that type of shit you know that ignorant shit people say good hair right so i went out of my way to always make my girls especially as black accented as possible because i didn't like shit that really happened in their life like teachers would treat them differently from other little black girls that didn't have as light skin as curly or as straight hair and they often and this is real shit right they often used to try to discourage my girls from playing with the very 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 black looking little girls because those my daughters are black so their cousins look like that their friends in their neighborhood look like that so they didn't have no problem um being friends with little girls who look like me darker and more um you know broader features because that is what they were accustomed to that is who they are right but that's another thing people always try to downplay when it comes to white people white people are always fucking with children when it comes to color texturism um hair mannerisms all that type of silly shit they do that constantly with children like even right now i got two granddaughters where their dad is turkish right so again in addition to having their mom who is all mixed and stuff like that who is my daughter from black and asian people right because indians are asian they have the in turkish people are what are considered eurasian because they derive from the ottoman empire and the um Sikhs from like Persia and stuff like that way back in the day so they're more Asian than white and way more Asian than Arab even though a lot of them like to claim that shit so anyway um they're they're, they're light their hair is that weird shit and um their features are funny like their skin may be light and their hair may be straight and curly but their face looks like a black person a typical on how you people say unambiguous black person it's in their face the same way when those white men used to rape african women those children would come out with light skin and wavy or uh, silkier hair than normal but in their face straight up negroid same thing with my grandchildren right so when they go to school same thing like that used to happen with my girls there's so many instances where not children but grown-ass people who are white try to convince your children of their ethnic and racial identity like i've had so many conversations with my grandchildren about why it is they're black and that biracial shit is something that they should not be trying to attach themselves to and that is the way we raise our family because y'all can do what you want think what you want be influenced by media and all those terminologies and categories and shit y'all want to believe in but i don't get down like that like i just told you i just sat here and told you i come from a line of women from slavery to present where the majority of the women do not have black fathers so the only way i'm going to look at life is through my reality and those black women's reality the reality that the majority of those women had children by men that they did not want to have children by period but they loved those kids and those kids came from black mothers who lived black lives looked black and were taught to be identified as black so that is the same thing i did with my my girls and i'm doing right now with my granddaughters <clears throat> because they are black they came out of a black woman they're a black child period i don't believe in that shit about fathers because fathers don't have children and their dna is not what um is in the, is in the child it is the mama's dna so anyway and i mean that in reference to when it is a girl black women pass all of their very special dna and i'm not going to go into all of that you guys should know that by now they pass all of their dna to their daughters they do not pass it to their sons so therefore fathers are not race carriers they just are not 
There are people that can be eliminated off of the face of the earth, never to be seen again. But women, especially black women, they carry genes that can never, ever die. Which is why when I tell y'all, never believe that black women, if they have children with other people, black um, people will disappear. Never. Because we are the beginning and all other people come from us. So how could we ever disappear? Right. So my thing is they have to learn to love little girls, hug on them. It's not enough to tell them they're pretty and to try to accentuate um, empathy and sympathy in them. No, you have to put them on your lap. You have to hug them, kiss them, talk to them softly, explain things they don't understand, have patience with them protect them from the men that you're so fucking crazy over that you feel like you can't live without you have to take care of your children you have to build them up and that's all the type of things that nobody ever talks about when they're doing these videos because it's all superficial shit that they think about in terms of just making themselves look good and making it seem like you know how people say um wrongfully like they're open-minded fuck open-minded when it comes to having to form your child in this life and giving them all of the tools that they need to deal with constant racism real racism and not that bullshit people think uh personal prejudice bigotry and um biases no individual person can be a racist you have to have power and you have to be involved in a systematic uh, form of oppression and suppression of a group of people. And there's no one person that does that, okay? So anyway, not even the president can do that. They all have to be, um, sorry, I gotta put my cord in. They have to be part of a system doing that to people. Because if it's just one person, people don't even have to pay no attention to them. They just go on and look at me like yeah that's what you said but i'm gonna be doing this over here okay whatever all right so anyway oh, that's a really nice um what do they call that i forget the name of the picture when the computer comes back on and just has all these nice little pictures fading in and out that was really nice beautiful sunset but anyway so with little black girls you have to do what i used to call lap time like with each one of my kids, because I had quite a few of them, I would take individual time and sit with them, talk to them about their desires, their wants, try to formulate, you know, in their brain to think about what they would want to do in life in the future. Sit down and find out individually how that child learned, you know, because all children learn differently. Like some kids, you could tell them something and they could put it together and that's the way they learn. Other children are visual like you could show them a picture or show them how the process goes the steps one thing goes after the other they get it right away and then you have the other children where they learn by example if you literally do something in front of them they can do it immediately right after that all you got to do is show them one time and they're good and then you have the ones that actually can read comprehend or look at stuff and figure it out they call them analytical children, but I, I doubt that. I think it's just another way to learn. And then they got it, right? So you sit down and you figure out, you know, what kind of child do I have? And you go from there. You, What I used to do was, and I'm still talking about the stuff that they never cover when they're speaking about little black girls. I used to watch my children play. I used to watch the interactions. And I would watch them sometimes mimic things that happened in my life and look how they replayed it. And then I would ask questions as to why they decided to play that out. Uh, what, how did they feel about it? And then go into the explanation of why that happened in real life and how people were supposed to respond and behave with certain situations, right? And what other people do when they're disappointed by others and they have to make up or compensate for other people. Like we really used to have these conversations, right? And so when you do that, you pretty much adultify the child in a good way because you take that naivete away 
but you still leave them the opportunity to think and process the information you gave them with a child's capacity, right? To understand it, to think it through, to make it make sense to them. Then the other thing with little black girls, a lot of people don't talk about is you have to get them to the point where they actually begin to express their feelings, right? Because a lot of little black girls, because I knew I was one of them, because I had a quite dysfunctional mom, and that was due to um, substance abuse and, and um, alcohol. Well, a lot of little black girls who are literally adultified in the sense where they have to take care of younger siblings, they're never allowed to express their frustrations, their desires, their wants, their needs. So these are the things that when people are talking about trying to build up the self-esteem in little black girls and trying to make lives better for black girls, which I'm all for, right? But when you have never, the reason I say don't listen to them when they don't have children is when they have never sat down with a child and a child has had a moment of, of personal crisis, right? Like, I'll never forget this. My daughter was in the sixth grade, my daughter Epiphany. And we had spent like two weeks finding her the perfect prom dress. And I bought her a small tiara and she really looks beautiful. I, I bought her gloves that went up her arm. She just looked great, right? And beautiful, bedazzled um, kitten heels, right? So she looked great and um, I went and took her to the salon and I had them um, put like an extension in her hair to make the curl and the flip just look great, right? So when she went to school, she was dancing and stuff. Some of the other girls, the white and Hispanic girls, they're making fun of her, teasing her about, oh, she's wearing a wig all the time to try to embarrass her because she looked very nice. The one thing about certain other little girls, depending on the friendship they have with little black girls, is that they remember how the black girl always had their back and was there for support and comfort during times where they were being bullied, harassed, or beaten by other kids in school, right? So I'll never forget. <laughs> there she had a little Asian friend. I think it was a little Korean girl, right? And I forget her name right now, but if, um, if it came to me, I would say it right. But this little Korean girl was tough as hell. Y'all yeah, love this little girl, right? So um, she came over and she was like, oh, don't make fun of my friend. You just making fun of my friend because she looks like a real princess. And you guys look like somebody didn't care enough to go buy you decent clothes. Yo, when I heard the story... I thought I would hit the floor dying laughing because this little girl was literally doing the dozens with all of them that were attacking my epiphany, right? So while Epiphany's upset, you know, because my daughter, because like, I'm sitting here telling you about how we communicated a lot in my house, right? And I let them vent and express their feelings and taught them all types of of um strategies and coping skill tricks that i learned from taking psychology classes in school so you know my kids i felt were very aware of themselves and very sensitive and i didn't have a problem with them being sensitive because being sensitive allowed them not only to express themselves but to also understand the nastiness and the limits that they themselves would set for another person to do to them so she got upset she cried a little she told me the story she said but then after she saw her friend i wish i could remember that little girl's name saw her friend going to bat for her she said it gave her such confidence that she came back and she just started <laughs> helping her friend tear them up with the with the you know back and forth with the dozens she said until one of the teachers had to come over and said, oh, okay, let's stop it, let's stop it, let's stop this. And I had said, yeah, but where was this teacher when they were doing it to you, right? And so she said, oh, they were in the corner drinking punch. I said, yeah, drinking punch. What was in that punch? <laughs> right? So it was a long time ago, but it was a funny story. You had to be there, I guess. But 
the point of it was I had given my daughter everything she needed to be equipped to be vulnerable, right? To even be insulted, hurt, and ashamed. And for her to be able to process what had happened, find the courage within herself to defend herself and to actually conquer the situation, right? So she was explaining to me how even though her feelings were hurt and her friend was defending her and etc., she was thinking about the fact that they were talking about her in such a way to make her feel bad about how she looked and she eventually had came to the conclusion that the reason they were doing that to her was because they were jealous envious and that she had to look really really nice for them to go so hard with trying to make her feel bad and that is a real thing y'all um it's a german term i can't think of it right now where it literally means that a person gets pleasure from hurting another person verbally and watching the person literally shrink in a shame and guilt and um hurt in front of them i forget what it's called i forget right now but it is a real term it's a psychological term for people because they got that from um the nazis and the, the evil shit they used to do to all the people including the jewish people that they had in uh, put in concentration camps because that's another thing guys in this world you got to learn the truth about everything all people were in those places as well if they and if you actually do the real history and look into it in the research you'll find out that germany had been a place for hundreds of years where africans did very well for themselves in small provinces 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 <laughs> provinces in um germany and other places in europe um you got to remember that long time ago there was like uh the european um renaissance where it was a whole bunch of artists a whole bunch of um inventors and etc that were african and african-american can i say african-american african and then um whatever it is they they derive from being african and mingling and mixing with all the other people from parts of europe and other places and i'm talking about 1400s 1500s wait like christopher columbus time before there and after so i um, mean there's quite a few you empire emperors that were actually african that ruled in europe like um um what's his name lucius i forget was it uh emperor lucius or king lucius you guys can look him up but he ruled in in um europe for a long time his it was a black man his name was lucius so but anyway and it was several black queens that married you know how the, the monarchs used to do that shit marry each other simply to keep money in the family and to build alliances between different countries and etc so but anyway um little girls they need people now you go sit down because you dripping on me after drinking water get out of here um little girls need constant and when i tell you constant they need constant reassurance. They need constant guidance on their character, their integrity. Go lay down. Their integrity, their um, self-esteem, how they're supposed to um, guide themselves when you're not there. You literally have to give them examples of situations where if people try to solicit them to do things what they should do what they should not do who they should contact right away for assistance and also just for general knowledge of the situation so that if the adult has to take corrective action whether it be legal or physical or whatever the case may be they know what is actually going on and they can determine if the situation is going to escalate or it can be de-escalated or eliminated altogether you have to teach your little girls that stuff so in addition to all that right you have also the part when their little girls 
they go through this period where they feel like their mom kind of like belongs to them so i know like with my daughter epiphany that same daughter after i got divorced from her dad which was the first divorce i got she kind of felt like um she didn't want any other guy to come and take the place of her dad with me and also take away attention from her because he was there and literally she told me this and this is kind of like the level of communication the level of comfort and security in a mother child or mother daughter relationship you want to have with your daughter you really want to encourage your daughter to feel like she can talk to you about anything even if the problem that she wants to talk to you about is you or if you are the person that has hurt her hurt her feelings or whatever that's how you that's my suggestion to you especially if you want to have a functional daughter when she's grown where she doesn't run around feeling like she needs a man a male to validate her or feeling like she needs to worry about the opinion of these black males trying to make her feel like she's ugly or she's not good enough because they have a uh, identity crisis. So it's a lot with little black girls. And the fact that too many people on here are always giving ridiculous advice and they don't talk about the things little girls actually go through is a problem. Because little black girls, because I can remember when my daughter was on the track team, right? Now, little black girls, for whatever reason, I don't know why that is, but their bodies seem, well, we all know their bodies are more muscular than other little girls because as black people, we're more muscle than a lot of everybody else. Most other people are more fatty in, in connection to us, right? So, and I'm talking about BMI, you know? So, um, anyway, I remember she used to run track and, you know, when you run track, you work out a lot. You work out, you lift weights, you eat all the time, you run. So you get really big, like, well, she didn't get really big, but she get big. Like, her thighs would get, you know how black girls are, their legs would get bigger than normal. It also makes your, your buttocks big. She just got more defined and thicker, right? So I remember, like, at different track meets, I literally would have to, like, fucking be ready to hurt grown men. Or cuss them out or actually like if their father was there like look at this motherfucker over here and like literally send my husband over there to like threaten the fucking bejesus out of this piece of shit right so this is a real part of little black girls lives there are 30 and 40 year old motherfuckers that actually drive up to high schools and pick up little black girls as young as 16 and 15 years old fucking our little girls impregnating them and treating them like they're grown women when they are fucking children these are also things that people have to talk about when they're talking about raising little black girls it's not always you know thinking about the one to 12 years or one to 10 because that's when she's little and you could pick her up and you could yell at her and she'll probably cry but you have to think about all of it. You got to think about how everything she's exposed to from the time she's crawling and being carried in your arms to the time that she starts getting uh, body pains, growth pains, because she might be getting ready to go through puberty. We have to think about all the things that affect how she feels most importantly, because self-esteem really has a lot to do with how you feel about yourself and how others make you feel your worth or your value is in your immediate circle. So if you're yelling at her all the time, constantly cussing her out and calling her bitches and whipping her ass and, and treating her like she could never do anything right and she's always doing something wrong or whenever shit doesn't go right for you, you're super frustrated, so you take it out on her by yelling at her or fucking her up or making her do all the work that you know you're supposed to do as the adult. That is a problem. And that's also a lot of the stuff that causes our little black girls 
to have such issues when they grow up and then they get the wrong guidance and the wrong support wrong information from friends family and fucking weirdos and predators okay and this i know because i also experienced this firsthand when i was very um strict with my kids my daughter especially my daughters and i sheltered them a lot they didn't get to listen to misogynistic rap music because i explained to them that music is disgusting it tries to dehumanize black women and it, it it's going to make people feel like they can do whatever they want to do to black women and there will be no consequence and that they are expected to do foul shit to black women and girls because the music is pumping it and producing it so i explained that to them so some of the things that i did let them listen did would let them listen to would be like really positive rappers like now you got people like kendrick lamar but before him I used to let them listen to people like Lupe Fiasco, you know, rap along those and like the fun stuff. And honestly, to tell you the truth, just to go on a little tangent about rap, rap is fucking gross. And it became gross um, with the interjection of niggas with attitudes, NWA. Um, well, I shouldn't call them out completely, but... It became, when it first started out, it was fun music. Fun, make you dance, make you smile, make you laugh, make you want to compete in dancing type music. Then they interjected, you know, they want to talk about how hard it is to live in the hood when a lot of that shit was bullshit. And then they want to talk about how they want to kill people, hurt people. And then came the part where they just fucked up rap altogether with trying to dehumanize black women. And I don't give a fuck what anybody says because it ain't about women in general. When you look at any of those videos from back in the day, starting from them dumbass fucking bitches, salt and pepper, everything was about sexualizing black women. You can look at those videos all day. You'll see the trend. When the videos first started, it was all dark skinned women, brown skinned women. Then it went to all light skinned women, all this ambiguous looking shit. And, and now it is today ass shaking no clothes on wearing or having and just ridiculous shit it, it, fake asses it, it's just stupid now but yeah they weren't allowed to listen to that and even though i know they used to sneak and listen to it at school and at friends houses i was explaining to them along the way you gotta understand that when you hear negative stuff toxic stuff about you about where you live people in places that are very close and familiar to you you become desensitized to that and you too will indoctrinate that shit into your brain whether you understand you're doing it or not because you're going to do it subconsciously that is why you don't listen to that shit because it will seek seep into your head no matter how much you try to fight against it because that's what it's designed to do so anyway when they were young the hugging the communication was big that made my girls feel like they were securely attached to me that they knew they were secure in mom they knew that if anything happens my mother's coming to fight for me my mother's coming to defend me my mother's coming to speak up for me my mother's coming to find out what happened to me and none of that is a bad thing I know you hear dumb broads on here all the time talking about the so-called ghetto black woman that goes up and wants to fight everybody at the school. Well, sometimes you got to really be that person that really will go up to that school and tear that motherfucker down to get some respect and to get these people to stop fucking with your children because it is that serious sometimes. I mean, I'm telling y'all, if y'all, if I could really take y'all back in time and y'all could literally see some of the stuff that used to happen to my daughters and my sons due to white people, white teachers and their racial prejudice, it would make you literally want to fuck those teachers up. I mean, these are grown people bullying children and children are children. They don't have anywhere to run and they, they don't have the ability to be slick mouth back to 
you know, to the teacher to the point where they win. They might say some slick shit, but what is that really doing? You know? I mean, one point, one situation, I'll tell you about one thing outside of my daughters, but with my sons. Because um, my oldest son, uh, when they were younger, I, I was like, didn't want to spend money all the time to get their hair cut. So I would corn roll their hair back. And my oldest son, he used to have a nervous situation where he would take his braid and always twirl it around his finger and, um, you know, hold it. And that's whenever he got nervous, he used to do that. Because I remember when um, me and his father used to be yelling and shit in the house and screaming and, and, and shit at each other. He would sit down on the couch and be rolling, rolling and, and just staring and, and like, you know, because black men are always causing fucking trauma and drama in the fucking household to kick their fucking ass out. So, but anyway, my son used to do that. So I found out in school and my child was only in like the third grade. So, you know, I was tight. I was this big grown ass white bitch picking on my little child so i found out she used to like literally stand over him and scream in his face bring him to tears and then have him twisting his hair out of nervousness and then he would go hide under the table of the seat that he was assigned in so she would not come back and do that again well you know back in those days things weren't as much as they were today with with them being such a stickler for security at schools and not letting parents walk in. So I have found out about this because one of the other kids' parents, the little boy's name was Johnny. He was telling his mother what was happening in the class. And so we happened to be going to the same store one day, which was Target. And uh, she was telling me about what had happened. And I said, what? So I first went and tried to, you know, address it with a couple of people at school and I kept getting like the runaround. So I asked a few more people. I kept asking my son till eventually he told me what happened. I literally went up to that school and grabbed that lady by her throat. I kid you not. And I literally tried to drag her out of that school because I was going to tear her fucking ass up. Because I knew that I, if I beat her up in the school, I would literally be in trouble. But if I dragged her outside, that would save grounds. Because she's not... See, in New York, you can't fight, literally, on the, on the block of the school. It's the block right in front of the school and the block after the school. So all I would have had to do is drag that bitch across the street and, and tear that ass up. And that was my plan. But anyway, the security guard was a lady that I did like and respect. So I let the bitch go. And I told that principal, you better move my son out of this class today. Or she's going to, you going to be arresting me. And she's either going to be going to the hospital or the morgue. One of the two. Because she's not going to be with her grown ass in this building. Intimidating my child to the point where they're crying twisting their hair and running under the table no i don't do that shit at home and she's not gonna do that here anyway they did their little bullshit investigation and that lady ended up getting suspended but and they moved my kid out the class but you know when somebody's messing with your kid like that that's not really good enough you want to put foot to ass so there were also situations different from that that happened with my girls because my girls were always very generous and I used to always send them with like snacks and different things to keep them occupied during the day. And like in their lunchbox, this is cute too if you want to help build like your children's um, esteem and their confidence. Like inside their lunchbox, I would write little notes like, Mommy loves you today, and she wants you to have a great day, all right? Make sure you smile three times and say, I love you too, Mommy, right? I would put all types of little notes and shit like that in their, in their lunchbox, or I would take a picture, and back then, right, I used to have this Polaroid camera, so I used to be a crazy person, right? I would take pictures of myself and cut the Polaroid out, and, you know, and I'd be like, hey, you know, and, and write crazy shit on it. And put it in the lunchbox. I used to do all types of stuff like that. Just to make them feel like. Oh you know. Uh, 
mommy and mommy still here so that they wouldn't feel alone throughout the day especially like first grade and second grade because even though they were supposed to have been acclimated to school by then they still didn't really like school that much and eventually I ended up putting them in Montessori school I don't even know if they still have Montessori schools but I ended up putting them spending the money and putting them in Montessori school like the first set of kids they went through it all they went through Catholic school till I got tired of that shit they went to private school till I got tired of that shit and then they went to Montessori school where they stayed until it was like um, I applied for them to go to another private school in Brooklyn for high school and then my daughter said no she wanted to take the specialized the New York City specialized high school and she actually did and she got into um, Bronx science and then the other one had got into uh, you know they got into a couple of schools they wanted to get into so they went there and that was that and then they went off to college but all those small time years of from being a toddler to like I would say a pubescent which is right before being a teenager I spent many days like always being hands on with my girls like teaching them how to braid using each other as an example teaching them how to cook always like literally having them close to my hip and you know like always hugging on them always kissing on them talking to them having them go places with me like i even used to take them to the nail salon back in the days before we had all this fancy stuff today and just get them a basic um manicure and pedicure clear or french tip something that wasn't a big deal for a little girl while i was getting like all of the fancy whistles and shit like that but um I used to do that with them. Even when I used to go, I used to actually spend money on the hair salon. I shouldn't have been doing that. But when I did that, I would take them and let them get like a light press and curl. So they felt important. Now I know money is tight and money is funny with a lot of people. Because back when my kids were young, America was different. Like um, I got my first apartment before I got married to my, my first husband. When I was like 17, I worked at a fucking gas station. And I had a one-bedroom apartment in the Bronx, uh, two blocks away from Yankee Stadium. Times have definitely changed. I think I was only making like $4 an hour or something like that. But it was enough to afford a one-bedroom apartment. Can you believe that? Okay? So, things really change. Eh. Sorry to yawn. But like, even like up to 1994 in New York City, I remember like when I first moved into my first apartment before I bought the apartment I'm in now, my rent was $490. Can you imagine that? In 1994. So, child, um, things were different. So, you know, you could do a lot more back then than now. So, but anyway, I mean, you could do the same thing. You just got to make the money. And by making the money, I don't don't mean like have a, a... one job where if you can great but if you have two or three then you gotta do what you gotta do because you should have it like that because that's what i was always taught because you never know if you lose one you need another stream of income so i always try to keep a little part-time something or nowadays because uh working is easy a full-time remote with with flexibility with um when the the project is due and shit like that so all that type of stuff is completely on us we all have the same 24 hours in the day so with my girls always like watching them shadowing them i didn't care if people called me a helicopter mom and somebody who was overprotective and micromanaging i really didn't care about that because i made sure i kept older boys away from my daughters I make sure that um, no men ever had an opportunity to groom my kids because of what happened to me personally. I made sure that no one, even when um, I got divorced from my second husband and I started seeing men randomly, um, I never brought them in my home. I never allowed them to meet my children. They may have heard them on the phone, even, um, you know, when they come to pick me up. I would say, okay, you know, hold on, I'll be right there. Open the door. They may look in, but they were never allowed. And I seriously mean this, black women. 
those men were never allowed to step foot in my house because I had a house full of children. And I paid for my domestic servants to help me. So, you know, I would like leave and he would, the guy I would be seeing or dating at the time, like, oh, you're just gonna leave it. I'm like, no, there's a babysitter in there. There's a housekeeper in there. There's a nanny in there, <laughs> you know, whatever. And it's kind of crazy because sometimes black people, the black people I would deal with, they weren't used to a black woman working herself by herself because they didn't know my personal story. So, you know, they would just see a single mom um, living in a decent place with a whole bunch of children. And then I have money to spend and I'm doing things and we're doing a lot of things all the time. And then I just leave and come and go as I please. And they're like, never hearing me complain about babysitters or oh i can't afford it or i can't do it and they were very curious and they would always ask how do you just get to um how do you get to just walk in and out like that and i was like oh because i have people i pay to assist me with that so that also like i didn't know it at the time but that had an effect on my girls because my girls when they started going to college i remember epiphany telling me um you know mommy one of the most influential things you could have ever done around me was to show me how you used to order those women to watch us when you had to go to work and pick us up from school and drop us off and take me to my horseback riding lessons and take me to track and stuff when you couldn't make it and I was like, really, why? She said, because. She said, even though you literally weren't doing it the way you used to when dad was there, she's like, it still made me understand that you cared enough about me that you, you provided me with a substitute that actually did the very things that you would have done. And I was like, well, that makes me feel good. And to this day, believe me, she's my oldest and she's the one with all the children right from the turkish man and she does the same thing with her daughters like um matter of fact the young lady that they hired to wash the kids right because the dad he's a therapist so he works from home he has his study and shit. he works in the office there but they hired a young black girl to work in the house with the kids, make us some money while she's going to school. But for whatever reason, she decided to go away. So she was telling them, you know, I'm gonna go away and go to school, da 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 da. And so they, they agreed that no problem, you go to school, but when you come back home, you still have a job if you want it. So that was cool of them. And now what they do is to substitute for the black girl being gone who she went went to college and she decided to go out of state now because before she was here and she was just going to i don't know if y'all know this college but she was going to saint john's university that is also a, a catholic um university but anyway she transfers from saint john's to some out of state um university so that's where she's going now she's been gone like almost three weeks now she been going a while but anyway she keeps in touch you know because they've been dealing with her for like a couple of years now so she keeps in touch and she's good but you know she always has a job because the kids are so fond of her so in lieu of this girl being gone what my daughter does now because she's reflecting that off of what she saw me do she gets all of these other little girls not i shouldn't say that young women from care.com and um, urbansitter.com. So she has like, and the dog walkers too sometimes, cause sometimes um, her schedule and his, he doesn't get, get, you know, cause when, you know, when you're a therapist and you're doing the online stuff, you gotta be there every time the people um, hit you up. So sometimes he has breaks, sometimes he doesn't. So that's where the other pe the hired people come in because somebody has to walk the kids to school, pick them up, be there in the, in the um, apartment with them while the father's in his study in his office doing his job even though he can hear what's going on he can't be there every minute like sit down don't do that I need you to be still I need you to do this da, 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 da. you know so I'm glad that 
And I felt so good. I was like, ooh, <laughs> look, look, I, I rubbed off on my daughter. <laughs> so it's like, uh, she was like, yeah, I got that from you. She said, and I believe me, y'all, I had that shit on lock. I had bought an entire additional fucking minivan. Like, I back in those days, I used to love those Dodge Explorers. I don't even know if y'all know what those are. But I used to love a fucking Dodge Explorer, right? So I had about two of them. And one i used to drive to work all the time because i just really like you know don't don't mind me back in those days the sliding door was everything right so i love the sliding door and then when they came with that remote shit oh i was in heaven but but anyway i had a thing for the dodge dodge the ford explorer so and then later i turned to dodge but anyway um so i had had the you know extra minivan so I would always have to make sure these people had a driver's license and like try to put the fear in God in them about don't get into no damn accidents with my children now don't do that shit <laughs> you know so you know but it, it everything worked out well because I th- I really think the reason shit went well was because I was like a person first of all I use agencies so I get credible people but I knew that the agency would be taking money out of their check so what I would do was like supplement, like give them a little extra money of their own without the agency knowing about it, just to make sure they did like a better job. Because it's really true. If you pay people right, they're gonna do right. If you asking them to do the world and not giving them no money, they be like, fuck you and your job. But I paid them. And then Christmas time and holidays and stuff like that, I would try to hire other people so they could always have the entire time off. So I was trying to be extremely considerate. And also, I call myself trying to do right by them so they could do right by my kids. It it worked out well. But all of these things that I did as my daughters grew, like I said, in the end when she got older was when she actually told me, well, that those things you did for me influenced me to do what I do now. And and that's pretty much, I think, what we're all looking for. Or those of us black women that want to do a good job with our daughters as moms, what we're looking for. To, like, rub off on them in a very positive way where they continue to, like, pay it forward in loving their daughters. Whispering and empowering um love yous forget me nots in their ear all the time so that they know that if i don't have anybody in this world on my side i got my mama and my mama is gonna come through whatever hell and high water to come get me or come help me or come reassure me that's what all my kids knew even that fucked up one that i got that i had to kick to the curb but even that little bastard knew it too he, you know, sometimes that shit is true about the bad seed. Like, it's just one that just don't want to fucking do right. I I got one of them, too. But anyway, six out of seven is, is not bad. You know what I'm saying? I think I did good. Because I really was working on that number seven, too. But that number seven just, he just don't want to fucking do right. He don't want to do right. And I'm happy to, you know, report that these days he's doing better with his siblings. But I am not trying to fuck with that character. I'm not. You done did too much shit over the years. I will go to my grave and be like, yeah, okay. You keep your ass home that day, okay? You done fucked up and there's no return. You fucked up one time too many. Yeah, but that's the son story. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> we, we go over that story and that treatment later. That Jesus Christ. <laughs> but the daughter's yeah communication love secure attachment giving them that sense of security where they know that above everything else mom has got my back mom is gonna believe me when no fucking body else will mom is coming for me when i know nobody else can and i think that's that's the basics of it you know what i mean and because it's nothing better than the look on your kid's face 
when they think they're all alone and then you emerge from like out of nowhere and they thought you were gonna come or you should have been there and they didn't quite see you yet and then when they see you it's like their whole shit just lights up from the inside out like their whole face changes of course the expression is pure joy and happiness but there's like a light from the inside and then you see them stand a little taller speak a little deeper you know move a little more confidently it's a beautiful thing because that has happened to me like so many times when i was running late for plays <laughs> i remember one play she had where she was like one of the main characters the main protagonist and she had to do a huge speech and she was so nervous and i could not find a parking space oh my goodness child i put that shit on a fire hydrant and was like i'm gonna eat the ticket and I was running inside, and I, I grabbed the last seat. So I was way, way, way in the back. And I seen her with her little face, like, scouring the damn audience and looking worried. And, and even though, and it was so rude and disrespectful because it was another child performing, I jumped up and was like, I'm here. I'm here. I'm right here. And she was like, and then... And then and then you see her face like, oh, mommy. <laughs> right? And I was like, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, but half the audience and shit turned around looking at me like, lady, be quiet. I'm <laughs> like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And I give my daughter a shout out, let her know, mommy was here. I made it, goddamn it, I'm here. So, you know, it's all that kind of shit. But I think that's a lot of the stuff that when we as black women talk about raising our daughters we don't get into the tender mercies of who we are and what we do with our little girls like when we really really love them and we're not just pulling them up instead of raising them up and making it seem like they're a fucking nuisance and a bother because we chose to be parents and now they are a lot of fucking responsibility no I remember, um, like, my daughters being, like, seven and eight and climbing into bed with me after their father went to work and, like, trying to literally lay on me like they're a baby, like a toddler and stuff, trying to listen to my heartbeat in my chest and literally falling asleep on top of me. I was a big seven, eight-year-old little girl laying on me, talking about, Mommy, I just want to lay here so I, I go to sleep. I'm like, yeah, okay, okay. And then sometimes I would have both of them, like, on each side of me, one in the middle, that type of shit. But let me tell you, it, it was, it, I remember all of that stuff today with, like, the fondest memories. I honestly think, like, if I went to sleep and dreamt about it or thought about it enough, I probably could recollect the memory to the scent. Because we used to do it so often, and when I did it, both of us them or whichever daughter it was and me there was so much love and feeling in that moment that it was just like hugs and kisses hugs and kisses and squeezing until you know of course she went to sleep or and i also fell asleep and then my husband would come in the next morning all these little girls in the bed with me we all crashed out and he's like hello <laughs> he's rude but fuck awake you <laughs> that's what he's <laughs> come bust the door open hello <laughs> wake everybody the fuck up this <laughs> is crazy but that's what some of the the great moments i used to have with my little girls and then when they were teenagers even though they're big 16 15 17 year old by that time you know my husband's was gone it was just me in that big ass king size bed and them girls would come right on in there with their little footsie pajamas. You know those onesie pajamas? I used to buy them for them to fuck with them, right? I used to buy them, like, uh, the little bunny ones with the ears and all that shit. Just to mess with them. And they would put that on and sleep in it. And then they would come out of nowhere. You should, you see me up at night watching my little movies on HBO and shit or whatever. And um, they come and... Mommy, can I sleep in here with you? I'm like, what's wrong with your own bed? <laughs> She's like, oh, nothing. I just want to hang out with you. So then one, I knew it. Once They will always set me up. Once one come, here come the other, right? 
And I'm like, why y'all in here? Well, come on. I need some, I need, I don't, I want some privacy. You not doing nothing. Privacy for what? You know, right? So here these girls come. They all in the bed with me. And I'm like, okay. And then we would end up having different conversations. They would talk to me about boys, talk to me about girlfriends, talk to me about things that happen, how to address certain situations. Um, what was it? Um, my other one, uh, what was she doing? What was that girl doing? That so she worked in the summer youth program? Yeah. Uh, Salome. I have a daughter named Salome. Salome was um, working. So she was working and she was talking about an incident at work, wanting to know how to handle handle that because of the office dynamics. So we would discuss stuff like that. Uh, lots of things. Yeah. It, it was a lot. But I, those little girls, when they were little, I I really did like the fact that I had raised them to feel so comfortable with me that they would tell me like every and almost anything. And the only time I got upset with them because I felt like my trust and our bond had been broken was when again my oldest daughter had went away to school that first year by herself before I sent my son who was like a year younger than her for them to be in school at the um at the same university together where i told you that that barry university is the bomb because they actually gave me a discount on my tuition because i had two kids going there at one time so but anyway she did a whole semester before my son showed up because my son was still in high school before she before you know <clears throat> she got there he got there because she was there first because she's older than him so anyway that's the only time I got upset with her when she broke my bond was because she got into that relationship with the Haitian guy and I don't know what he did to my child, but my child would not confide in me the way that she used to. It took a little time for her and I to constantly have conversations about trust and I would talk to her about, we are family. You never let any outside person come between family. Family is always there for each other outside people come and go i don't care if they're husbands wives girlfriends boyfriends whoever they are they can pick up and move anytime never be obligated to you and even if they are decide that i don't want to fuck with you no more and go about their way i said me as your mom until one of us goes into the ground i am obligated to you whether i want to or not no matter if you're 500 and i'm 3000 it doesn't matter that obligation is there don't you ever let any outside person come in between you and me ever again in your life and that's really that was the only thing that we ever went through with a major major issue but yeah that was that and the good part about stuff like that is because she was the oldest one the others they learned from her and they saw all of the stuff that went on between me and her and so I didn't have that issue with them. So anyway, that's just my contribution into, um, it's more complicated when we talk about raising little black girls and loving them and giving them all of the reassurance and security they need while building their integrity and their self-esteem and self-confidence to go out in the world that is always looking to beat them down from day one day one i mean i can remember the first first incident i ever had with epiphany in school she was in kindergarten and i had to go up to the to the school and deal with a fucking teacher over my daughter's braids because you know back in those days like my daughter she's born in the 90s so i used to put cornrows and all these beautiful beads in her hair right and to make her proud of being a little black girl. So the other girls, uh, the teacher claimed that the beads were a distraction. I said, well, they just gonna have to be a fucking distraction because that is who she is, that is part of her culture, and you or nobody else is going to make her feel minimized or small for representing her culture. It's not gonna fucking happen, period. So that was one of the first things and she was like i said in kindergarten y'all 
so yeah it it's it's a lot to raise little black girls more than just superficial shit they was talking about on that video about trying to make them nice and sweet and i guess sugar and spice and everything nice that little girls are supposedly made of <laughs> but when you're a real mom now you get the fuck out of here sorry y'all when um you're a real mom just give me a minute naya i'll be finished go come on go lay down and you can harass me in a minute so naya is feeling like that too now she wants some love and attention <laughs> she's crazy <laughs> so oh what was i saying i got off track because of naya's crazy ass um yeah so little girls are way more calm little black girls come with a lot of complications in raising them not in who they are but because of life and respectability politics slavery legacy of it and how people feel like they have a right to abuse manipulate and do whatever they want to your children because in this country they were allowed to, they were allowed to do it for hundreds of years it's very difficult for people to stop abusing people that they have abused forever so like i said that's my take and that's my contribution to saying that when we talk about and we really want to discuss raising little black girls we have to come from a very very multiplicited um or multifactored point of view where we look at everything that affects little black girls and black women because those little girls are looking at their black mamas who are black women who are walking this road before they walk it or who the mamas who are actually making the road that they'll walk later on because they look at you and that saying is true children learn what they live so if you live in foul they're gonna learn to be foul if you're living in a way where you're trying to deal with life and categorize it or compartmentalize it the way it should be so that they don't encounter all this stress in their lives they learn how to deal with problems properly they don't go out of their way to start feeling like if things are not chaotic they're not comfortable you don't want children like that which is why black women i mean you can think about it however you want but i'm so serious when i tell you as a woman that has gone through all this shit that you may go through to avoid it if you could keep black males out of your lives out of your children's lives and out of your home you will be so much better for it especially this day and time none of these guys are equipped to handle women relationships children family they do not know how to be responsible they do not know how to be men so you incorporating them into your life even though you may have been convinced and forced your whole life by your family to feel like you supposed to need them want them and take care of them do yourself a favor don't do it center yourself leave them to their own devices and really love your daughters really see your baby every day and tell her how beautiful she is and how and why you love her so much give her a big damn kiss hug her and let her know feelings and expression and love for each other is expected that's normalcy that's not weakness that's fucking greatness all right with that i'm out i'm about to go to sleep and, and play with naya for a minute so she can feel love too peace out y'all i'll see y'all soon i actually like this we might do this again <laughs> i didn't forget the education video i'm coming with it <laughs>